Gareth, good to see you. Um, look, I've got to start with a bit of a sombre one because it's, it's Sir Bobby Charlton's funeral on, uh, on Monday and we'd be remiss if we didn't ask you about that first, I think. A huge moment of kind of sadness and celebration, I think, obviously for Manchester United fans and England fans, but mm. I think any, everyone in football is going to be touched on a day like that, aren't they? An occasion like that? Uh, no question. I think, um, I mean, so much has been said and it's difficult to add anything that um, carries any further weight, but... Um, I think respected around the world, really, and clearly you'd have to say our greatest ever player um, when you think of not only the World Cup but also winning the European Cup and everything he did at club level as well. So uh, very sad. We're fortunate to have met him a few times and um, incredibly humble. Um, so, yes... It, it, our condolences with all his family and um, yeah but hopefully uh, when we get the chance to honour him at Wembley almost a celebration of his life really um, because I think he, he absolutely deserves that. Thank you. Um, right onto the squad matters um, I've been saying for the last couple of days that whether Raheem Sterling was involved in this or not it would be the headline he's not in that's five consecutive England squads now he's, he's missed um, can you explain why? Uh, I think a year ago it would have been unthinkable that, that he'd missed five England squads. Such was his importance to you and, 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 and mm -hmm. England. Um, how difficult is it going to be for him to force his way back in for the Euros now when there's only one more squad you've got to pick between now and, and then? Well, uh, I mean, the door is 100% open, not only for Raheem, but for other players that aren't in this squad. So there's no doubt about that. I mean, we don't need to know about his his quality, his personality, um, he is a crucial part of why the, we've had the the journey we've had over the last few years. So uh, I can only repeat what I've said in the last couple of squad selection meetings. The team are playing really well. We had an exceptional win here against Italy last time round. Who do we leave out to put him in? So um, it, it's as simple as that, really. Has he upset you? Is there a damaged relationship here that needs to be you know, made amends about? Has is, is he done anything wrong? No. <laughs> uh, it's an important you know. question because people will, will ask that, Gareth, about whether there's a breakdown in the relationship between you and him. But who, who am I leaving out to put him in? It's you, just you it's know, been we, so we, important we, to this England squad for, for your first six years. Mm. He was Only Harry Kane has played more games for England in the run-up to and including the World Cup. Mm. And Raheem Stanton hasn't played since the World Cup. That's pretty marked, that difference. Yeah. Look, he, he wasn't available in March or June. So the team had started on a good run. We won in Italy for the first time in 60 years. The two performances in June were excellent. Um, so we stuck, we've stuck with that group. Um, we've stuck with that group pretty much through this qualifying campaign. We, we've deliberately not made many changes because we felt that that's been fair to the guys that have been in the squad. Performances have been excellent. Um, there is huge competition for places. There's no question Raheem is looking dangerous for his club. He looks invigorated uh, since the start of this season. Um, and as I said, there are a few players that aren't in this squad for whom either they're injured or the, the door is absolutely open. We'll always be open to that. There are players in this squad that missed quite big chunks of time with us, Kyle Walker, Kieran Trippier. Um, so we've, you know, we've often had that type of situation. Um, and as I, as I say, we, we're really pleased with the team. So uh, there is that continuity, really. Lots of injury issues of differing <coughs> degrees with some of the players that you've named. I wonder if you could talk us through how difficult that's been for you over the last few days and weeks. Who's struggling fitness-wise? We thought Bellingham, James Madison, Callum Wilson and Bukayo Saka were the main ones that are carrying Knox. Mm -hmm. Is that right? And, and, and how are they, I suppose? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, some of those, we, we could lose one today after a scan, we could lose one tomorrow, so, yeah, we don't really know. Um, you'd be amazed at how complicated it is picking a squad, because, um, of course, all clubs are sensitive to information and you're trying to piece everything together, so um, I couldn't be certain that everybody that is in that squad will be there on Sunday night, um, varying levels of doubt with that. Probably Callum is the is the biggest doubt, I would say, Callum Wilson. Um, but equally, um, uh, I'm pretty confident that the others 
can get through and they're all keen to be in the squad. So that's a, a really good sign. Last one from me then. Uh, concerning those strikers, I think, Eddie Nketiah will be absolutely devastated that he's, he's missed out. Mm. Would he have been included if he'd been fit? Um, but the other options you've got with Wilson, hopefully if he gets there, and Ollie Watkins, mm. there's a big battle going on there between three exceptional players to be Harry Kane's understudy. There is, and there's also Ivan Tony, and there's Dominic Calvert-Lewin, who's starting to get games again. So there is competition at the moment. I've said to Eddie, we see Callum and uh, Ollie slightly ahead of him, um, but he's progressing really well as a young player. Um, I, I don't think his injury is a, is a big problem from, from what he's been saying. So, um, And we've enjoyed working with him in these last couple of camps. We wanted to include him as a younger forward that we didn't know as much about and uh, he's an excellent finisher um, so yeah it, it, he's left a positive impression with us he's not in at the moment but maybe that could change over the weekend as I say. Hi Gareth uh, with John Stones out is there a real chance for one of the other centre-backs to come in and take the opportunity with Mark Gahey uh, playing mm -hmm. against Italy last time out? Yeah uh, I mean it's an area of the pitch where we've had a big turnover in the squad um, you know two or three players who had a lot of caps with us have uh, not been playing for their clubs or injured in the last few months. So, um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really disappointed for John. He's, uh, uh, the quality of his play is outstanding. He's having a difficult time injury-wise at the moment. So that's a shame uh, to see him out not playing. Um, but as you rightly say, it gives other people an opportunity. And we also... We do need to know a little bit more about some of the players in that area of the pitch. And in defence as well, there's only two specialist left-backs listed with Trent listed as a midfielder. There was so much made of the amount of full-backs you had. Is there still the depth in, in that position? Well, there is. Um, I was hoping to call Rhys James. Um, he doesn't feel he's quite ready. Um, and I understand that. He's, he's had a long path back from a number of injuries. So... Um, He's, he's probably a little bit cautious in that respect, but I, I can understand why. Um, so we, we have got options, but um, yeah, there, there, aren't, uh, it, there aren't perhaps the experienced options that we might have in other areas of the pitch. I think some of the younger fullbacks are doing well. I think Tino Livramento has done really well in his uh, games for Newcastle, but... I think being with the under-21s is still the right thing for him at the moment as well. After the Italy game, Calvin Phillips said he agreed with you that he needs to be playing games at club level to have a chance at, at playing for England. Just wondering whether you could tell us a bit more about that conversation and how crucial it is that his situation changes in January for him to go to the tournament in June. Yeah, I think for any player that's not playing football, um, it, it's for them about their career, really. England is a consequence of club, but you also want fulfilment. And you, if you're training every day, you, you want to play. Now, he's up against world-class players at his club, so I completely understand why he's not getting the games. Um, and so, uh, you know, between him and uh, and Pep and Cheeky, I, I'm sure they'll they'll discuss what's the the best route forward for him. Um, we know the quality of his play. Um, he, he was, I think, in the team of the tournament in the Euros. He was our player of the year uh, a couple of years ago. So we know he can play at this level. And he's at a club like Manchester City because of the level of player he is. So um, he, he's continued to do a good job for us when he's come into the team. You'd like him to be in a better rhythm of playing. Um, but at the moment, that's, that's not the case. Um, and equally, there aren't many players that can play in his position at, at the level. So that, that's why he's still in the squad. Hello, Gareth. Um, just going back to, to Raheem. Um, in June, he didn't make himself available because he didn't feel he's quite fit enough. Is that the message that despite how many caps you've had with England, there's so much competition for places that if you don't make yourself available for camp, it, it could lead to your exclusion? No, I'm not looking to send a message. Um, that is an area of the pitch where we've probably got as much competition for places as anywhere. Um, and, yeah, you look at 
Uh, Jared Bowen has got seven goals this season already. Anthony Gordon is playing very well at Newcastle as well. Cole Palmer is starting to play well. So it's just a changing landscape there. And um, when we first started, we didn't, we didn't really have any depth of wingers to play with wingers, if you like. We, we had Adam Lallana that was a different type of player. We had Marcus Rashford, we had Raheem. Um, but we didn't have the ability to refresh the team and that's why we played with wing-backs for a long period going into Russia. So now we have a lot more depth in those areas. Um, you know, I would say probably more depth there than any other position. And uh, that's, I understand all the questions, but that's the reality of where we are. The one player that excels for you at England that seems to be under the microscope under the microscope at Manchester United, and that's Marcus Rashford. Have you spoken to him this week? Because he seems to have been constantly in the eye of the storm, fairly or unfairly. Uh, I've not spoken to him. He's, um, he knows we love him. He's been exceptional in the last three starts with us, um, away in Scotland, Macedonia at Old Trafford, here against Italy. So we're, we're really happy with him. We, we think he's, his form with us has been good. He's scored goals. Um, yeah, I think he enjoys his football with us. F for, for me, there's nothing to discuss. Uh, quite a bit of a surprise at the handling of how he went out for his own birthday, reported for training the next day, trained well, apologised to his manager for the perception of how that looked. But then that apology and that conversation was raised in a press conference again. Is that how you would handle it? What happens at his club's nothing to do with me. Um, and looking to last night and the VAR decision for, for the red card on Marcus, when things are condensed down to a still, do you think that's a fair interpretation of an event? Yeah, um, I mean, I think he's unlucky. I think it's a red card because in the end, uh, the action takes him into a collision with the player. But... Everybody in football knows he's trying to protect the ball and get his body across the ball. So, um, yeah, just really unfortunate, I would say, in that respect. And Chelsea against Tottenham at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, a lot of the time on the pitch with players static waiting for decisions. You inherit these players and it's exactly how you pick up hamstring injuries, muscle injuries. Is that a concern for you? You must be quite glad watching that, you're not a Premier League manager at the moment. <laughs> well, I was bored watching the game. I was at the game and it just kept stopping. So, um, never mind the players, what about the fans? Um, now, the flip side of that is, I think all the decisions were right in the end. So, if that's the purpose of the game, then fine. But, yeah, it's sucking the enjoyment out of goals. Um, and I, th I think the ball in play time for that game was incredibly low, even though we had 21 minutes of extra time. So, yeah, that would be... Well, I talked about VAR a month ago. There's no point in me going over what I think about it. <coughs> Hi, Gareth. Um, <clears throat> one of the defensive options you haven't mentioned is Ben White. Is, is he available for selection? I, I assume so. Um, we're... Yeah, Ben's been very solid for Arsenal. Um, he is a different profile of fullback. Um, you know, he's more he's a centre back playing at fullback, really. So, um, and he's obviously doing a, a good job for his club. He's he's just behind a couple of others in our in our reckoning. Because obviously he's not been called up since the World Cup, which he left prematurely. Mm -hmm. So he, he's been left out purely for footballing reasons. There's no lingering issue off the back of that. No. Uh, again, we've got Kyle, we've got Kieran, we've got Trent, we've got Rhys James. So um, we, it, it, it's a position where we've got strength. Um, as I said, there's a couple of good young ones coming through. And um, yeah, again, we've, we're on a good run. You know, the def defence are, are, are playing well. So that, that's where we are.